thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We ask that, Lord, you will feed us. You will refresh us. You will renew us. You will give us a kick for a new start in the direction you want us to go. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a clap offering? And please greet someone to your right and to your left. And tell them welcome to today's service. It's great to be here. And I trust that God will speak to us today. We today are looking at the topic breaking the inertia. Breaking the inertia. In the first service, we had a wonderful time. Dr. Adelaide was sharing with us on what that meant. I cannot begin to summarize that now because there was quite a lot said. Quite the Lord said. And the message is on our platforms, either on Facebook or YouTube. Please take out time to listen to that message. I plead with you. It will refresh you. Praise the name of the Lord. He gave the meaning of inertia and what God expects us to do change from our static state and move forward and advance. Change our environment, change our perspective, change many things. That's why I want you to please take, a, take time, listen to that message. Praise the name of the Lord. I will be dealing with the same topic, but from a slightly different perspective this morning. Um... I will be looking at overcoming induced inertia in our lives. There are many issues that bring about inertia, but like was done in the first service, let me first of all break it down. What does inertia mean? So if you don't know what a thing is, breaking it will be difficult. I had to look into the dictionary last night. And this was the definition that it gave to me. It says that it is a lack of energy. A lack of energy a lack of desire, an ability to move or change. A lack of energy, a lack of desire, an ability to move or change. A second definition said that inertia is a property of matter by which it stays still. A property of matter by which it stays still. This Bible is sitting here. It's not moving. It's in a state of inertia. But it can also be something that is moving. It's moving. But that movement is just in at a pace that does not bring any change except a power outside it impacts on it praise the name of the lord so a ball can just be rolling on at one inch per hour it's moving but when a player comes and kicks it 
you kick it out of the state of inertia. So the ball has been jolted into another state and level of activity. Praise the name of the Lord. When I examine the lives of believers, I find that many things induce inertia. Oh, you see people who were once bubbling. They were once bubbling in faith, but suddenly they have come to a level where nothing seems to move them anymore. And each and every one of us goes through some of the phases that I'm going to talk about today. But I'm going to believe God that he will break us out of it. Praise the name of the Lord. The reason we are looking at this is because God wants every one of us to be fulfilled. When you are held hostage by the things that have happened to you or the experiences you have had, you are not likely to go far. But those hostages or things holding us hostage will need to be dealt with. And that's why I said I'm looking at it from a different angle this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll just read one scripture from Luke chapter 15 and then we will continue. Luke chapter 15. I read from verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him, unto them, sorry, his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And that citizen sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm no longer, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, <coughs> excuse me, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, we are very familiar with this story. This young man was one of the two sons of a very rich man. He was eager to enjoy life. He didn't wait until the father died so that his portion of blessing can come to him. He he, he went to the father and said, please, i like to enjoy my things now. I can't wait till you, your will is read. And the father obliged him, and they shared his property into two, and gave him what belonged to him. 
And we're told that a few days after that, he gathered all together and off he went. And when he got there, he said, I must show these people that I am different. I'm the son of a big man. And so he started flaunting his wealth, holding parties, spending recklessly. He had the gift of spending. He didn't have the gift of management. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's what happened to people when the only anointing they carry is the ability to spend. We must all learn the ability to make wealth, to turn money around. In one way or the other, turn your money what? Around. Grow your money. Because even if you have one million naira, once you remove one naira from it, it's no longer a million naira. But it's only when you grow your money that you will keep having the status you want to maintain. Praise the name of the Lord. I see the life of the prodigal son as one of wrong judgment and bad management. Wrong judgment and bad management. And every one of us, once in a while, we make wrong judgments. We make wrong judgments. And it brings us where we don't want to be. Or something that is also badly managed. It could have been done differently, but you chose to do it one way. And at the end of it, instead of increasing what you have, you depreciate. In his case, he lost all his money because of his righteous living. And when he began to lack, the Bible says no man will give to him. If he had managed his life better, he would have had some reserve to fall back. He didn't have anything. Let's be careful. Let's be careful that we don't run ourselves into such a situation. But when a person runs himself into that situation, the result is shame. Shame. And rather than being in the limelight, you look for one corner to go and hide. Life does not have its attraction as it used to have when you were buoyant. How many of us understand what I'm talking about? They make I just go rest my head. Though. We are shame. And so shame can hold you captive. Anytime you want to speak, you remember, I was once a big man. And you just retreat and keep quiet. But listen, you can bounce back again. You can bounce back again. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, I've given this story before. How many of us have played the game of Monopoly? Yes. It's all about if I had money, I would buy this or sell this and get this. this. The man that invented Monopoly was once a businessman. And he lost his business and lost his wealth. He used to live in the city. And so because of his loss, he retreated to a village. And he kept remembering his life of being a big man. And then he started this game. If I had money, I would buy a filling station and sell off this one and do this. And he designed it into a game, which we call Monopoly today. He came back to the city and he sold the game and became a millionaire again. Can we give the Lord a clap offering? So you yourself can bounce back again. Don't let shame, don't let your failure, don't let your failure hold you captive. Yes, you took a wrong decision once, but you can be wiser in the next one. So don't let shame hold you back and say, I don't want to try again. No, 
The Bible says that the prodigal son came to himself. We must at one time or the other come to ourselves and take a decision that this is not where I want to be. I can be better than what I am seeing now. Praise the name of the Lord. Shame makes you see everything as impossible. It makes you see every door as closed. It makes you see that there's no more opportunity. But that's a lie of the devil. There is no situation that cannot change. Don't get comfortable in defeat. Praise the name of the Lord. Then the second thing is sin. Sin. I'm backsliding. Peter was telling us that we have an adversary who is roaming about seeking whom he may devour. And in John 10, then Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That is the devil's strategy for all believers to kill, to steal, and to destroy. To lead you into a situation that compromises you. To lead you into a situation where you will lose confidence in yourself. Where you are not able to speak to people again about the faith that you profess. Praise the name of the Lord. Because before you speak, and say, eh, shh. Let us ask God to help us to live lives that are worthy of him. Let us pray every day to make it a resolution in our lives that others may, but I won't. It should be a personal resolve. Others can do what they want, but I am not going to. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you sin and you are knocked down. Hey man, listen to this. Everyone gets knocked down. Everyone. Everyone. Don't think you are the one who is most... Uh, let me use, rephrase it the other way. You are the worst person that has ever fallen. That's how the devil will want to present it to you. Until you listen to some other people's story, you will find that yours is not as bad. I am not condoning sin. But what I'm trying to say is that at one point or the other, we all miss it. We all fall short of God's expectation for us. But that's not a reason to bury your head in shame. Come back to yourself and say, I admit I missed it. I, I, did, I did what I shouldn't do. Ah, a cousin of mine was having some marital issues, which ended up in a divorce. <laughs> and his brother said to him, but as a Christian, you shouldn't divorce. He said, any other situation other than what I have now is better than what I have. So I'm going to go through with it. It's, and the brother asked him, what are people going to say? He said, after they have talked for three months, they will forget about it. Hello? Yes. People will talk about your fall. They will talk about what you have done. But after three months, they will have forgotten what you did. And when they have forgotten, why should it be you that is reminding yourself every day of your failure? Hello? Yes. God said to the Israelites in Isaiah 118, come, let's reason together. Come, let's talk together. Let's, let's settle this matter. Though your sins be as red as crimson, it shall be white as snow. Hello? It is not the 
extent of your sin that you should be looking at. You should be looking at the extent of the grace of God. He says, your sin I will remember no more. But you choose to remember and live in that defeat. You put yourself in a state where you are paralyzed. Hey, brother, sister, it's time to break the inertia. Because you are just where the devil wants you. And is that where you are going to remain for life? No. 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 Remember this. We were sharing at our morning devotion recently. Any one of us who has given his life to Christ, God no longer sees you as you. He sees you in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. In your fault, he still sees you in Christ. Except you have renounced him and you have blasphemed against him. He still sees you as his own. The hope is not lost. Come back to yourself and get back to Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The prodigal son said, yes, I missed it. I've sinned against you and heaven. But he came to himself. He made a move. Oh, go to God in repentance. Go to God in repentance. And you find that he is gracious and he will receive you back to himself. Praise the name of the Lord. The devil also holds people down with their personal issues. With their personal issues. When you want to speak to someone else concerning an issue in your life, he says, shh, physician, heal thyself first. How many of us understand what I'm talking about? Yes. He said, if you have so much power and your utterance can bring a change, change yourself first. And so you are paralyzed. As a young preacher, this was a problem I had to deal with. There were some 18 areas I avoided because he will come and knock you later and say, that is you said. <laughs> but that's exactly what you are facing now. Physician, heal thyself. You are paralyzed. But I got over it when I realized one thing. God did not call me to talk about myself. He called me to talk about his son. And what he can do, not what I can do. Hello? I am a messenger. I am a messenger. The Benin man will say, oh, giko, giko. The message that was a messenger was sent does not kill the messenger. I'm only a messenger. And I'm delivering my master's message and not my... So if I tell people, God can heal, I didn't say I can heal. Hello? God can bless. I didn't say I can bless. I am only a messenger. You are only a messenger. Don't let your personal issues be cloud the ministry, the word, all that God has given you to do for his kingdom. Tell the devil like Jesus did, get thee behind me. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stop allowing the devil to paralyze us. And that's why today I have liberty in the word. I declare the whole counsel of the word of God. I don't hide anything. I don't, I don't in any way shy away from any part to say if I talk about this now. The devil will come again. Let him come. It doesn't really matter anymore. I'm hitting Christ and Christ in God. So whatever bullets he throws, it doesn't matter anymore. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then the other thing that we must break from is procrastination. God says to you, my son, my daughter, this is what I want you to do. And you say, Lord, give me some time. 
You are looking for when it is comfortable to do it. Anything you do for the kingdom is always a sacrifice. Listen to that. Nobody has more than 24 hours in a day. Except you have designed a new clock. I try to design one. The only thing is that it remains 25, uh, 24 hours, except that the one hour is now smaller. Has it changed anything? No. Because the sun will still rise at 6 a.m. and set at 6 p.m. It's still 24 hours. So anything you want to do for the kingdom of God is a sacrifice. And don't keep postponing the day when you will go forth to do something for God. The scripture said today is the acceptable time. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the time to act. Now is the time to be engaged. So we must break off that spirit of procrastination, of thinking that tomorrow will be better. The scripture says those that are looking at the clouds, will never sow. Hello? Yeah, you look. It's going to rain. Okay. Let me stay home today. Tomorrow it will be brighter. And you wake up tomorrow, the sky is still the same thing it was yesterday. What's going to happen? You are going to die of hunger. Because if it is the rainy season, you keep looking at the sky and you keep seeing clouds. And but if you brave it and go into the cloudy day on your way, you might just find that it was only in your area that there was a cloud and that the sun is shining elsewhere. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's, let's stop procrastinating. Let's stop thinking that tomorrow will be a better day. No, today is the day. Today is the day. And like the prodigal son again, Let's come to ourselves and get up. The thing about inertia is this. You need to act. You need to act. You need to act. And if you don't act, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Many opportunities have been lost. Many graces have been lost because we, we have deferred doing something for too long. When I was a student, I discovered one thing. Uh, in my final year, I wish I were as wise when I was in the first year. Perhaps I would have made a first class. In the final year, God gave me a reading strategy. I divided my notes into sections and decided what I must do each day. Because any work you fail to do today adds to the one that you are going to do tomorrow. Am I correct? And so you have double headache. But if you do each work when it is supposed to be done, you will find that it's easier to cover the cost. So I will, I will, I divided into 15 pages. No, no, 12, 12 pages. And I said, today I'm going to read everything in these 12 pages. And some days I have such inspiration that I go from 12 to 20. What have I done? I've covered the work, some work of tomorrow. Hello? And so you found that Every course I read that way, I had an A. I said, hey, if I had known this. But you know, all of us, you go into the university, the first year, you are enjoying liberty. In the second year, you begin to know that this is a serious business. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So if what you need to do today, you don't do it. You have doubled the work for tomorrow, and you have also doubled the headache. Also, if you fail to invest in a particular thing at a particular time, 
the time you are ready to do it, the price would have gone so high. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me give you an example. When I wanted to invest in a particular company many years ago, I was told that it was 25, uh, yeah, 2,500 per share. And I said, ah, that's too much money. Too much money. Then when things improved with me, I didn't have money. That's why, you know, when you are poor, you argue with everything. When I had a little more money now, I asked about the same company. They now told me it was uh, 250 per share. Ten times what I was told a couple of. So if you don't do it when it is cheap, it becomes more difficult when it is costlier. Procrastination never brings any good results. It never brings any good results. We must break that in Nasha to do things when they are due. And when we do that, we will get the desired results we are looking for. Praise the name of the Lord. The last one I would like to deal with today is being captive of your past. Captive of your past. Some things happen to you and it has shut the door of your heart. That even when a better offer comes, you seem to miss it. I know of a sister many years ago. She wanted to marry somebody. And the mother said no. And she said to the mother, if you don't allow me to marry this person, you can forget about marriage. Do you know up to today, she is not married. When any man starts warming up to her, she breaks that association. It's not a relationship yet. She breaks the association because she was badly hurt by what happened to her. That's what I call captive of your past. Listen to this. There is nothing in this life that should hold us hostage. Nothing. Or, you are a brother. You have expended so much on a sister. And at the last minute, she married someone else. And you said, I don't want to be involved with any woman again. Hey, listen to this. All things, the scripture says, work together what? For our good. We only see what is before us. We don't see into the future. We don't see the whole purpose of God. At the instant, some of the things happen to us. Brother, sister, if that's your case, Hey, give love a chance. Give love a chance. Reciprocate that smile that is coming your way. Reciprocate that warmth that is coming your way. This may just be what you have been looking for. This may be what God has designed for you all the while. You know, listen to this. I've been a lecturer in the university now for a couple of years. And you know what I see with students? They want to read a particular course. Maybe it's medicine. But they then end up not getting medicine. They are given another course. Their heart is in the medicine where they were not admitted. And they are absent from the course where they were admitted. They are not able to break off that disappointment of not being admitted into medicine. Medicine they are not in. The cause they are admitted into, they are doing so woefully. So even if you wanted to make a case for a transfer, they look at it. Oh, your candidate has only carbon chains. Not a good case. Even this 
smaller cause, it's not doing well. How much more in medicine? You know, Professor Akigbe was my roommate when we were in the university. I used to see some of their books on the shelf. A short course in surgery is like this. <laughs> It's as fat as that. A book called A Short Course in Surgery. So I asked myself, what would the long course be like? So if you can pass my Zoo 101, you want to do a short course in surgery, you won't get there. I always advise the student, take your heart off what you didn't get and put your heart in what you got. Do so well that they said, ah, if this student were in medicine, he would have done excellently. Hello? That is life. Don't get held hostage by what is not and neglect the thing that is. I have long found out that life is not a straight line. God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. Don't get locked up. Don't get locked up. Break it off. See, let me show you something that amazed me. We used to have a brother those days in the fellowship. It was after he left school, we started hearing some stories about him being careless with women. Oh, we were all disappointed. But listen to this. He's a president and founder today, and he's doing very well in ministry. He could have said... With the things I had in, I did in the past, nobody will ever listen to me. Brother, sister, the grace of God is bigger than what we understand. In fact, the day I heard him announced once on television that he was going to go and do I said, hey. That's when I know that when God has not finished with you, he has not finished with you. Get up. Move. Change your position. Change your mind. In fact, the scripture talks about we renewing our mind. Renew your mind. See the possibilities that God is placing before you. And move forward. You've got to break this induced inertia. Life on one spot is not interesting. Eating one soup every day is not interesting. God has made life for variety. Enjoy that which God has provided for you. Let me tell you something before I close. The best is yet to come. Did you hear that? The best is yet to come. So you need to go out and look for it. Break your inertia and go after what God has for you. Shall we stand up to pray? I don't know where your own lies. But let me tell you something. God can make a way where there is no way. Today I want to ask you to pray. Father, I've been in this place for too long. I want to move forward. I want to put it behind me and reach out to the place you want me to be. I want you to open your mouth. Just pray for yourself. God is gracious. He's merciful. He wants the best for us. Don't be a prisoner of anything in this life.